uh, runners. Race two on the card, into a clash with the FA Cup final across the capital. This was the card, starting off with the Diamond Stakes, then the Derby, the Princess Elizabeth Stakes. Uh, runners race three, a brand new race, the three-year-old dash before the dash itself and going forward to 5.05. <laughs> The first race was the Group 3 Betfred Diamed Stakes, one mile, half a furlong. Highland Avenue was two to one and calling them home, Simon Holt. And they're off and racing in the opener on Betfred Derby Day. The Betfred Diamed Stakes and Marie's Diamond straight into an early lead, followed by Highland Avenue up on the outside, the favourite Colsai in the light blue and yellow jacket, followed then by Imperial Fighter, red with the brown cap, on the inside red cap Escobar, and just wide of Escobar is Regal Reality as they race through the first furlong and a half or so and reaching the high point on the course. And it's Marie's Diamond that sets sail in front under Holly Doyle, Highland Avenue, close up in second, William Buick in the all blue jacket. Cole Sy and David Egan back on the inside from Imperial Fighter, O'Shea Murphy back in fourth place, Escobar and Jason Watson and Ryan Moore at the back on Regal Reality. Racing down the hill, and Marie's Diamond leading the way to Highland Avenue, about a length between them, followed by Colsai taking a trail in behind them into Tattenham Corner. Imperial Fighters out wide, then from Escobar, and Regal Reality is last of the six runners as they turn now into the home straight, three and a half furlongs from the finish. Marie's Diamond only a half length to Highland Avenue, who travels up strongly. Then Colsai about two lengths back in third, followed by Escobar, Imperial Fighter, and Regal Reality. Highland Avenue goes on now from Marie's Diamond but Colsai is very quick to challenge. Highland Avenue Colsai Escobar finishing with Regal Reality and then Imperial Fighter as they race on now down towards the final furlong is Highland Avenue from the three year old Colsai out wide Regal Reality is gaining on the front pair inside the final furlong Regal Reality with a storming run down the outside to collar Highland Avenue and Regal Reality goes on to win the Diamond in the hands of Roy Moore. In second, Highland Avenue, Colsai third, Escobar, Imperial Fighter, and Marie's Diamond. Regal Reality, 5-1, to one. Ryan Moore, Sir Michael Stout, and Peter Doan, a great result for the sponsors. Highland Avenue, 2-1, to one, favourite, finished in second. It does look as though uh, they finished fast. Regal Reality, who was sat out back as we saw it. Uh, not always the easiest horse to predict, but one thing that is becoming more and more predictable is the age of the winner in this particular race. Since 2006, now seven horses at the age of eight have won this race remarkably. Regal Reality, the latest of them, gunning down the three-year-old Colsai and Highland Avenue, who we don't see all that often, uh, but Regal Reality reversing form from Newmarket with the Godolph in charge. I've been joined by Fred Doan from the sponsors of the Derby and the Oakchester, Day, of course. Bet Fred, he was just presenting the trophies for the first race to the connections of Regal Reality, which, of course, is his brother. But where's Peter? Peter Wembley Stadium today. Unfortunately, I can't be there because we're sponsoring the Derby, but it's what a great day to be here. He bought me straight away after the race. He said, bring the ready zone for me. Make sure you do it. Keep it in the family. So, and I am so proud to be able to do this. We've had a long journey from 1967, opening our first betting shop in Salford. Never expected to be in, uh, not in a million years, but we're here today and I'm loving every second of it. And does the dog racing, I love the sport and we're there. And as Betfred sponsors, we're, proud, we're so proud. I can't, I've lost the words with it. Oh, brilliant. Well, I'll let you carry on enjoying the day because unusually, of course, it's the Betfred Derby up next due to the FA Cup final, which your brother is at. Many congratulations to him and best of luck to you for the rest of the day as well. And thank you, River, for standing by. And they're off. For the 2023 Betfred Derby, King of Steel got away all right from the stalls. Adelaide River forward on the outside. Arrest going forward from a wide position as well with Passenger very prominent as they race up the hill in the early stages. Out uh, wide then uh, is Military Order just towards the outside from San Antonio. Artistic star Passenger in the firing line, Dubai Marlin. Getting across now is Arrest. Uh, back in the field to King of Steel, then Spreewell. 
and then towards the rear then August Rodan is towards the outside dear my friend up the inside way Piro White Birch is uh, just about the back marker as they now move across to the inside of the track and Adelaide River just getting across now in front of San Antonio the uh, two stable companions followed by Dubai Mile then passenger close up arrest has got a good position from a wide draw Frankie Dottori in the pink cap they're followed then by military order Spreewell on the inside is King of Steel followed by dear my friend August Rodan probably got about four behind him artistic star the Fox is held up white birch and white Piro. Reaching the highest point on the race course now and about to swing on, tumbling down towards Chatham Corner. And it's Adelaide River from stable companion San Antonio. They are one and two. Arrest in a fine position, just three off the rail in third place, followed then by Passenger. On the inside, the white blaze Dubai Mile. They're followed by Military Order, also in a good position from then uh, Spreewell. King of Steel, the inside. White Piro trying to make up ground outside the Foxes from Dear My Friend. They're just behind all Gus Rodan packing field and then towards the rear artistics statistic uh, star and finally white birch as they now swing into tatnam corner with about four furlongs left to cover in the bet fred derby and it's san antonio and adelaide river still going stride for stride into third is a rest with every chance dubai mile on the inside will have to go for a daring run there king of steel is running on well with passenger then out wide here comes august rodan in the hands of ryan moore beginning to burn down the outside from the foxes in behind these passenger arrest is weakening it's king of steel that's come through to take it up king of steel in the hands of kevin stott chased now by august rodan as they run down to the final furlong they appear to have it between them the big horse king of steel August Rodan is thrusting down the near side. August Rodan beginning to get up, and August Rodan gains redemption in the derby. August Rodan, a ninth derby for Aidan O'Brien, a third for Ryan Moore. War down King of Steel, what a run in second. White Birch back in third, three well in fourth, followed by the Foxes and Wipiro. Never, ever doubt Aidan O'Brien. Ryan Moore, guys, home. August Rodan for 9-2 to two success in the Betfred Derby. King of Steel ran a huge race, 66-1 to one in second. White Birch, the best out of the Dante form, 12-1, to one, finished in third. But the horse who blew out and disappointed last time when favourite for the 2,000 guineas with talk of the Triple Crown for the year, uh, very much murmuring away when well, he blew out last time, not this time. Not after, though, the big, big price uh, king of steel 66 to 1 on first start this season first start for roger varian uh, ran out a huge huge threat in the closing stages he burst out of the pack he's a big horse with a big talent august rodan though up in trip gunning him down on this better ground spreewall seemed to have been slightly inconvenienced in the run maybe a bit more so when fourth and white birch a big run in third but aiden o'brien nine wins in the derby it's a third Derby for Ryan Moore on August Rodan and you were saying beforehand that the horse would have to feel very different to the 2000 Guineas clearly he was was that apparent straight away yeah straight away he was in a, a very good rhythm he, was, he felt in a very good place going to the start and it's very smooth I always felt the control of the race he got there going easy um, st still a little bit uh, immature when he got to the front but he was when, when I asked him he found plenty inside the last fire I'm be very happy with him I think and people were saying he won on bad ground last year and thought the ground in the game has been his favour, but he's got, he's got a beautiful action. He's a lovely moving horse, and we always thought he'd want nice ground. And um, Aidan always had a lot of belief in the horse, and we were just, even last week, we was looking at um, a Preakness with Sunday Silence won it, and just grand uh, sire. And the markings are exactly the same, so um, yeah, we, we, we think he's got huge potential. Talk me through what you were thinking in the straight as you were seeing the race develop ahead of you, particularly the, when the runner-up king, runner king of Steel went on. I thought I had the race won as soon as I crossed the road, really, and um, I was a bit worried about hitting the front as early as I was going to. And, and the second horse kicked, and my horse just shut down a little bit, but when I asked him and we had to go win his race, he, he found plenty then. And is this his trip? Is he, a, is he a mile and a half horse or is there more versatility to him? Given we saw him in a Guinness, you'd imagine there is. Yeah, look, he, he got the trip very well, but he was very comfortable throughout the race. It probably wasn't the strongest run derby, um, didn't ride like it, and he, he felt like he was doing it easy 
for his, for his speed in his class. I'd say he'd be adaptable, but he obviously gets a trip fight. Instinctively, how do you feel he compares to your previous Derby winners, Workforce, Rule of the World? I look, look um, I mean, in terms of, you know, give me an idea of how he differs, if you know, I'm not asking you to rank them. Yeah, he, he always felt like he was going beautiful, you know, I think this quicker ground was, was a big help to him. Um, he, you know, like, workforce won half the track, you know, um, rule of the world, it was, it was a title ding dong. This horse, he was giving a similar fall to workforce and the way he went through the race and was always comfortable, so it's delightful. And finally, the contingency plans, the things that have had to be done in preparation to actually get this race off. Can you give us from your perspective, the jockey's perspective, what you were told about that and how it went from your perspective? Uh, to be fair, I think um, Andrew Cooper and his team and Jockey Club race courses and the BHA, they've been on top of it and it seems to have, I don't know what's happened, but it seems to have gone off without a hitch and, um, and uh, I think that's a very good sign. Well, the 2023 Betfred Derby has been run successfully in unusual circumstances, but we're very familiar with the trainer who's won it. Aidan O'Brien has won a ninth Derby with Auguste Rodin. Congratulations. You were so adamant that this horse was brilliant and you couldn't have you know, the doubters after the 2,000 guineas. Can you explain why you had that bedrock of certainty? Yeah, no, I suppose, Lydia, it's unusual with this horse. Like, uh, from the very start, when John decided, and John and Sue, and everyone decided to send her to Japan, for her, or like a maiden mare to send all the way to Japan to be covered by Deep Impact, like it was an unbelievable call. And then when she was scanned to be in fold to a colt, and and then all the height of expectations was straight away from this poor foal since he was born. And he was measured, measured, measured all the way. And and all the measurements he was hitting the top all the way. And it's very difficult on a person or a horse to handle all that hype. But he did all the way through before he came to Ballydile. And then when he came to Ballydile in February, I remember Ryan sitting on him in February as a two year old and he said this is very special. And then it all just rose even higher. And then um, he, 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 he had a lovely run first time and then he won his next two and uh, then won his next three and then he was put away and the plan was for the guineas and uh, two days before the guineas like we always felt the guineas was going to be his toughest assignment uh, but when that happens everything has to fall right for you the things that you can't control have to fall in place for you but two days before the guineas they all started falling the other way where his flight was cancelled he had to go the day before instead of the morning and, and then everything was ground and all the circumstances just fell against him that we couldn't control so really we felt it was just a non-event um, and then I suppose when, when we said that it obviously heap more pressure onto the horse and everybody around him that was looking after him so and obviously we had to keep the faith um, but then it was down to the acid test here today and like really coming here today <laughs> like it's so much of these things that they, they, they don't happen and, and like we felt he was the most special horse we've ever had a lady because he was out of the, the great one of the best Galileo mares by the greatest Japanese stallion and he had the movement he, and, and he, he doesn't look a big horse but when you stand into him he's a, he's a big horse so it, it's usually a sign of something different and then in all fairness to Ryan we gave him no instructions I, I spoke to Ryan on the way in the car and he said listen Aidan I'm going to ride him on feel and he, and that's what he did like the, we maybe would have preferred a stronger pace from the pace was slow uh, he, he, Ryan was back a good bit but like so he had to cope with a lot like usually if you're taking your time when the pace is strong the pace comes back to you but he had to go chase the pace and then Ryan said when he chased it he said he, he felt he was getting there too early and then he had to go again you know so it's incredible really it's it's um Listen, uh, uh, Lydia, it's, it's, it's incredible, but it, it, for me it all starts with John, where he, he, where he sent the horse to the mayor, and then it, it, he went through all his brackets all the way, and all his measurements, and all the reports, and, and then all... Listen, it's, it's, it's such a big team, like, like I say, for John and Sue and all their family, Michael and Dory and all his family, Derek and Gay and all their family, and Paul and George and Emily and all their family, and they're all so involved, uh, Lydia, I can't tell you. And then there's everyone at home, there's John with his team of vets, Andrew's in charge, him. Rachel rides him out, Wayne rides him in his work, Killian rides, makes the pace for his work, Martin rides, Ray, takes the lead horse for K uh, Rachel every day, and then there's John on the farm, John in the office, Chris, Jenny, there's so many people, and I'm forgetting to say a lot of people, and all the people around, and all the people in Coolmore who brought him, 
all the way along the step. The people that do a stable in the morning, and it's, it's such a team. I, I can't, I can't uh, explain to you about it. Uh, 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 really, a lady, you know. I mean, so. it, it's clearly such a team effort. Yeah. We see that in terms of how well oiled the team is and how, how prepared it is. But it's your name on the license, and it sounds to me, in the early part of what you were saying there, is that you're allowing that you felt a little bit of pressure with this horse. Uh, no, listen, I did, uh, Lydia, and listen, obviously, I'm re sorry, I'm re came over with me, and, and obviously, usually these days, they only go the one way. And, and usually the more you want them to happen, the usually they go the other way. So, and, and we, we knew there was an awful lot of things could fall against them today. Like there was a lot of things could have happened. There was a lot of things out there going to control. And I think for everybody here in Epsom, the way they controlled everything, they controlled the crowd, they controlled all the things that could happen. Like I, I think it was, there were so many variables that people were trying to control that could get out of control, you know, yeah. so. That must have given you an extra layer of worry, must yeah, have. Yeah, well, listen, for, for us it was the same for us all. So we all had to deal with it, but for everyone here, and, like it was, there was so much stuff going on, uh, like underneath, mm. and and like uh, we only know the half of what happened this morning before the race had started. What everyone had to do, and everyone had to be kept in order and in line, and just to try and make it happen. Like and listen, the ground and the way it changed, and you know there was so many things, the lady, you know. But for us, when it happens, we're just so grateful, and I'm so grateful for the lads. But they, they, they put all the money in. They is to ply all to have the horses and to keep everyone in jobs and the spin-off is unbelievable you know what i mean so listen i'm just so so delighted for everyone you are, really. you are palpably delighted no. you've explained the the breeding of a yes. Yes. so is this going to be is this a very important horse for coolmore i'd say he's probably the most important horse ever why he, because he's, he's by uh, he's out of on the silence that are now he's the very same as him and then and then he, he he he's like his dad where he likes to be taking his time he likes to come at horses because he has a lot of speed but he will be listen it should plan it set but like to give the horse a few days but obviously the cur would be a, 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 an obvious choice for him um but we'll see what how the horse is and what the lads want to do in the long term might he have international targets i'd say so Lydia. he's gonna this horse gonna love He's going to love travelling, you know, and, and he's, a, he's a pure mile and a quarter, mile and a half horse, you know. And, and the guineas would have been fine if the things fell for him. But it, like, and it might be a blessing in disguise that it didn't, because if he did eat today, and like, it's, um, it's, it's a great privilege for us, really, uh, to be involved with the horse and, and the lads and to, to be involved in everybody, really. It's, it's, that's what's really a, a privilege for us. Uh. <laughs>
Well, not sure it would have been plan A for Frank de Tori, but come on, May, he's won on what seemed his final mount at Epsom. Prosperous Voyage, Group 1 winner last summer. She was that Group 1 winner without a penalty. Bags of class, and no doubt this will propel her towards a charge at Royal Ascot and the Duke of Cambridge Stakes for no doubt going back and having another crack at Falmouth. She's beaten Random Harvest over on that far side and Astral Bow, who was in front of them when the pair had met early last month in the Dahlia Stakes. Frankie Dettori has just won on Prosperous Voyage. I was just asking him, is this the last time we'll see you at Epsom? Here we go. That's it. Me and Epsom have done. I'm taking that as a yes. Yes, last one <laughs> and we won. Well, it was almost a triple group one success. You'll yeah. take the next best thing with this win on Prosperous Voyage. Yep. Tell me about it. Um, she was a bit rusty in the spring, and uh, I thought this was a good opportunity. She's a filly who runs forward, but she anticipated the start, smacked her face in the stores, got back, and now I'm last. And I thought, oh God, plan B. So I follow Ryan, and sometimes things like that can happen, and it's good, because she's probably sick and tired of making the running. So today, to follow the others was a good thing, and she, she, she was very brave, because she had to give herself a bit of room there. She was good. Okay, so that might have opened horizons for her then, being yeah, able to no, ride a different the, 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 Yeah, exactly. The plan was always the, the Duke of Cambridge, so we wanted to get a race into her and try to give her some confidence. Um, so and that's, what, that's what she that's exactly done. So she yeah. she go to Asco with a, with a good chance. Yeah, job done, well done. And arrest, tell me what happened in the derby. It got very warm beforehand, jumped good, had a good slot. From the four, I was uh, in trouble. He was climbing. He was finding uh, the downhill around Tottenham very difficult. He took me into the straight, and he had legs going everywhere. A combination of the uh, left-hand track, the downhill, and the ground drying up. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is, you know. Can I invite you to take a good look around? <laughs> the last time that we see Frankie de Tori at Epsom, ending with the winner. Many congratulations, well done. Well, the man who has provided Frank Dettori with his last ever ride and a winner at Epsom is Rafe Beckett in the Princess Elizabeth Group 3. It's been won by Prosperous George, Voyage, even, get my words out. That was quite a moment. It was, wasn't it? It was great. She sort of hit the gate, didn't she, and anticipated the break, and we had to, um, we had to go to plan B. Actually, it suited her. Like you said, he sort of suited her because she's always out there on the front end and bashing away and maybe sometimes changing the dial helps doesn't it you know which is very relaxed today she went to post very well it's a good place you know she's a bit more matronly this year Lydia describe what that means well she's just carrying a bit more middle and when I went to leg him up he said are you sure you've got a fit you know so, <laughs> uh, she did a good bit last week uh, last Saturday she did a good bit and so I was fairly confident that she was coming round again. She ran a bit sort of like she needed it as much as anything else in the Dahlia so um, it was good, really good. I'm really pleased you know because she sort of dances every dance doesn't she you know and it's great when uh, you know coming back in grade and get it done it's good. I wasn't sure I had to tell you that this is the right thing. I thought it might was a sort of it could be a waste of a run because she'll go to the Windsor Forest now, a Royal Ascot or whatever they call it nowadays. Duke of Cambridge. Duke of Cambridge, I beg your pardon. And uh, I thought it might be a bit of a waste of a run. We were only two and a half weeks away and so on, but it was the right decision. So I'm glad I took my own as advice. So one, it's a confidence, it's a confidence boost to that nebulous concept, but also it might have opened your horizons in terms of maybe riding her differently in the future. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, her pedigree would suggest that she should get a mile and a quarter at least. There is a full brother whose name I forget who gets a mile and a half well, sort of 95 rated horse. So, um, on that, on, on, with that in that, on, with that in mind, you know, you would. I certainly go a mile and a quarter dropped in now somewhere you know Irish pretty Polly maybe she's in that you know we'll see we'll see we'll see and was it quite special for you to be provided this this success for Frankie yeah I mean you know it's not a man who, I, you know it's not it's, it's not like it's a, this is a long partnership I you know before I started training for Mark Chan and 
and, and Andrew Ruiz, and really he had a handful of rides for me over the previous 20 years or so. So, you know, it's but it's great, you know, Ken Ross and Lazoo and so on. The last couple of years, Angel Blur, obviously. Yes, uh, you know, it's been it's been great fun for all, all concerned. I'm smiling because of his exit line to you as you got off the podium, which was, no pressure, but you've got to provide him with that elusive July Cup winner, and you've got two of the possibles in Kinross and Lazoo. Any pressure there? No, not really. <laughs> you know, it, it happens, it happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll, remind him of the, I'll remind him of the Prix de la Forêt of 2021, when he should have won. But anyway, that's another, <laughs> that's another thing. But uh, I'm joking. But, you know, he, uh, that's great. You know, and you, Kinross will go there with a real shout, I think. He's training really well. And, He'll go to the um, he'll go to the uh, Group One at Ascot, and uh, and then go into the July Cup. I hope. We lose him the second platinum, platinum jubilee. jubilee. Sorry, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just checking it was the right one. And Lizzo, where we like to see her. She'll maybe? go to the Commonwealth Cup. Right. Yeah, she's she's training well. Uh, you know, looking forward to going back to six for that. I'm glad we ran in the in the Guineas. You know, we need to scratch that itch. Yeah. And uh, she's a tough girl. You know, she. She took it well, she's working well, looking forward to it. So many great stories yet to come in this flat season, but congratulations with the success. Well done, Ray. Thanks, Lydia. Thank you. Next up was a brand new race, the Aston Martin three-year-old Dash, a state well-backed four to one. Lined up and they're off. On the extreme right, Democracy Dilemma, Can to Can is pushed along into stride racing quickly is between the sticks with Dickie Bird down the center. Tatterstall in purple colors on the near side. Tallulah Myler was just getting across Russet Gold back in the field as they race through the first quarter mile and Miss Brazen showing a lot of speed now with Dickie Bird. Then uh, Can De Can on the outside. Democracy Dile Dilemma followed by between the sticks. JM Jungle in a light green jacket goes well. Then Tata Stall. Then Grace Angel in the red noseband. Behind these back in the field then to Zuffalo. Estate is chasing the leading bunch in a dark blue cap already down to the final furl. Miss Brazen and Dickie Bird with Democracy Dilemma on the far side. Tata Stall and JM Jungle Racing up towards the line, Miss Brazen, Dickie Bird, near side, Tatterstall. Tatterstall getting up near side. Tatterstall wins. From in second, it was Miss Brazen, Dickie Bird, tight for fourth, possibly. JM Jungle on the near side of Democracy Dilemma. That's just all it was. Eight to one wins. Connor Beasley and Michael Dodds, the first ever winner of this brand new race. Miss Brazen, 11 to one second. Dickie Bird, 33 to one was third. It was rough in the early stages, particularly for the returning and well fancied Russet Gold being crossed by Tallulah Meyer. Uh, Myla under Marco Gianni down that stand side. And it was from the stand side where the winner is burst. The winner had already beaten the state earlier this season, showing good speed down that near side. JM Jungle just not handling things perfectly, but showing real ability in fourth. Miss Brazen and Dickie Bird both running well. We just had the first running of the three-year-old dash. It's been won by Tatterstall with Connor Beasley on board. It was quite a rough race for some. I don't think it was for you. No, definitely not. Um, he's obviously always shown us plenty of speed, and you know his two-year-old career w was pretty good. You know, although he got, was a little bit unlucky, he didn't win as a two-year-old. We all always had him in high regard, and um, yeah, obviously, luckily enough, he's shown there today that he, the quality he's got. And I had a lovely, lovely gate um, in stall 13, and you know, bagged the stand side rail, which me and the boss discussed, and. You know, at one stage I probably did get headed, but at the same time um, he never gave up. And if anything, I was going away at the line. I felt, and um, no, it was was great to get get that winner on the board for him. I was about to ask, is there any improvement to come? But he's trained by Michael Dodds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> just speaks for itself. And you know, I think as as all of our sprinters do, they get better with age. And you know, I always thought he would be a good Saturday horse, this this fella, and it's just proven today that he is. And you know, he hasn't he hasn't had that much running, and I think he'll obviously improve for definitely coming down there and hopefully we can go on to bigger and better things now. What chance for a dash double for you? You've got Zarzini in the thing itself. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, diff different tactics on him. Obviously, he's a bit of a hold-up horse and 
you know, the even quicker quicker this time on it than, than it was with a three-year-old. But um, no, he, he goes there in good nick and hopefully he can, can do himself justice. Have you watched your third on Carnarvon in the Oaks back? Yeah, I've watched it back plenty of times, but, you know, I'll take nothing away from her. You know, she was probably, she had the right to in front of her, if anything, and, you know, she wasn't beaten a million miles, was she? So, um, no, she's uh, definitely one that we um, got to look forward to for the rest of the year. And was that to enjoy it, or was it to satisfy yourself that you ha couldn't have done anything differently? Uh, no, I think it was to, you know, the more I think about it now, and I even, when today I even come and, and walk the, the Derby the Derby track again, to be honest, and obviously the Oaks track. I, not that I'm riding in that, but, I, you know, I wish I could turn back time and have another bash at it, but hopefully, you know, she'll, she'll me, take me to them bigger days there now, and, um, yeah, she's, she'll look forward to it. Dave Stone is one of the owners of Tattersall. He's just won the inaugural three-year-old dash. Congratulations, a winner fantastic, on Derby Day. What's fantastic, it like? Fantastic, fantastic, unbelievable experience. I've, I've, I've been to Epsom 20 years ago, and um, it's just it's just fantastic. We've just been trying to find out about this horse a little bit. We really liked him at the Yearling Sales. Um, I rang Michael up, and he was in bed at the time. <laughs> He'll have been like this, you know what he's like with his covers. Uh, being from Denton, you know, apparently he's the best trainer in Denton, apparently. God, God, w. Graham. I'm not going to ask how you no, know what, no, no. what Michael looks like in bed, no, Dave. No, 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 no. He's got one of those big pom-pom hats on and everything. You know, he's, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And he's, he's always been very, very keen on this horse, and he's really liked the horse. And um, it's just brilliant. And you're with a trainer that finds more and more and more improvement in these sprinters. Well, that must the, be quite the, exciting. The thing is, the thing is he, he, he knows what he's doing. And, you know, we all have our second guesses, owners, trainers, <laughs> you know, uh, stable staff, etc., etc. But, you know, he, he actually does know his, uh, his pounds and pence, yeah. uh, being a farmer as well. <laughs> uh, but he's good, he's good, he's very good. So he'd, t he'd said, this is a dash horse, had he said anything else about this horse? Uh, he just said, you know, we just need to learn how to ride him, really, to be fair, because um, he's got that much natural speed. Um, and, he, and he shows a lot of home as well. Um, so it, it was one of those willy or won't he? And we were just saying we can't really go with tactics really in this race because everybody goes hell for leather from from the gate. And uh, he just said, look, you take the paint off the rail, Connor, and see where we end up. And he, he did a fantastic job. That's exactly what they did well. I'm going to let you go and enjoy your champagne and enjoy watching that one more time. Congratulations on being and, a... And up the north. Absolutely, up the north. Congratulations on being a winning owner <laughs> on Derby Day. Well done. Okay, Thank see you later. Bye-bye. Next up was the dash itself, which live in the moment was 6-1, to one, typically competitive fare uh, for the Colt Sprint of the meeting. And they're off. Breaking out pretty quickly, Mockertill down the centre. Mountain Peak is showing speed. Uh, also showing a lot of speed is One Night Stand trying to get across with the thin blue line and they're chased by Silky Wilkie. Away to the far side, Recon Mission is showing great dash and Sampers 7 now coming through in the noseband probably to lead overall. They're chased by Mountain Peak and Zarzini and Novello on the far side. Then behind these Angle Land in an orange jacket, Lord Ridderford further back trying to make ground vintage cla clarets under the stands rail as they race on now inside the final two furlongs. Recon Mission in the centre, right down the centre two is Clan Clarendon House this one probably leading now it's Clarendon House that's gone on from one night stand Novello is running on strongly behind those Silky Wilkie inside the final furlong Clarendon House is now being claimed by Novello on the far side near side Silky Wilkie Novello Novello has won the dash Clarendon House and Silky Wilkie fighting it out for second Zalzini doing well on the near side Mockertill running on and so too Papa don't preach on the far side but it's worth noting the start. Keep an eye on the stall's widest left. 2019-18 in particular, they open slower than those certainly towards the lower numbers. That involving living the moment in 20, the favourite. Lee Hu, who finished last out of 18. And out of 19, Vintage Clarets, who finished 14th. Novello it was who won the race from Silky Wilkie. Uh, spot the orange cap of that one, who was unlucky. Clifford Lee in the end switching. And the horse was beaten just a short head. The winner in the Carmichael Silks in the Stars about to swoop in the hands of Andrea Razzani in the cheek pieces for the first time. That was Novello. Clarendon House showing blazing speed, who no doubt will be picking up one of these five furlong handicaps at a point. But from the start, significant luckless uh, beginnings for one or two of them, not least the favourite. And it's the second winner at the Betfred Derby Festival for George Bowie. Novello has won the dash. And we can't say that you didn't tell us because you laid out the case in full, in detail, here yesterday. Yeah, look, he's, um, it has been quite a long-term plan for him and 
he likes fast ground. I think the stiff pace, as I said yesterday, would probably suit him. And um, it was a bit of a nervy last minute, but last furlong. But um, he's, he's progressive, and he was still very immature last year. And I know he was an early two-year-old, but I was pretty keen to persuade Fiona to keep him in training. And, and she, you know, she brought the other shareholders out. And um, with this race in mind, so it's nice when plan comes off. Um, what was it that you saw that made you do to do that? It's sticking your neck out quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He he was very mature physical and he's still quite up behind and you know he hadn't fully grown and he's not a big horse, but he just to me he looked immature. Um, kind of missed his. He, he won a race or two last year, but he didn't really go to the heights that I hope he might do this year. And um, you know, so it was a bit neck on the line, but um, certainly worth it. Um, tell me, you had, presumably you had an eye on him all the way through. What were your, what were your thoughts as the race developed? Well, he travelled a bit better in the cheap pieces this time. I, he ran on Monday at Windsor and he it was a four-runner race. I never really thought the race would be suited to him, but he's a fresh horse who doesn't do much at home. And um, yeah, he does it on the track anyway. And do you have a plan for him now? Not really. I don't think there's anything at Ascot. We'll probably keep him at five. Um, there's a race at Goodwood for him. I can't remember which it is. There's a handicap there for him. And, I think a similar sort of configuration of track, you know, it's downhill, fast five, strong pace, probably suits him. So we might just wait for good win. Are you happy with your work over the two days? It's been a good, good couple of days. Nice winning circle to be in. And the man who delivered Novello to victory in the dash is Andrea Atzeni. Congratulations. L last gasp in, in many ways to get his head up. Talk me through the race. Um, we obviously, we, you know, drawn five. We didn't think it was a deal at the time. Um, you know, as you well know, on the five foot on straight, a lot happens towards the south side rail. But I spoke with George before the race. It's, it's a little nothing we can do about the draw, and uh, we just have to stay where we are and, and just hope for the best, really. Um, we, he thought, you know, the five would have really suited him here, mm. where they go hard, and um, you know, it's a sort of stiff, quite a stiff finish as well. So, you know, on the going day, is a decent horse, and he uh, showed it today. George is thinking about sort of sticking to these kind of tracks, so maybe a target at Goodwood. Do you think he was suited by going downhill? Well, he came down the hill here uh, quite nicely. I think I think what really suits this fella, it's a big field um, where they go quick and they get racing quite early. Like he got beat the last day at Yarmouth in a five runners race, which I'd say that wouldn't really suit to them. The time before he won a Thursday in a 12 runners race with a, or 14 runners or whatever, where they go, when they could gallop and he came into it quite nicely. I do think these big handicaps will suit him better, although you need a lot of luck. And do you feel there might there be more to come? Because George was saying that he persuaded the owner to hang on to the horse rather than let him go after his two-year-old year. Do you think there's a bit more to come? I'd say so. It sounded like this, there was a lot, this, this race was a long plan for him. And uh, so they had him, George and the team obviously had him spot on for the day. But, you know, with these sprinters, they do get better. Um, you know, we're racing and we'd age. And, uh, you know, it, it, I know he only won a head or a short head, whatever it was, but he felt quite comfortable. Following that, we had the Betfred Leicester Piggott handicap, 10 furlongs, which Fox Journey was 3-1. to one. And they're off. Coming out of a good line. Promoter maybe a tad slow from an outside position, but recovering. Uh, going forward is Forker Timo in the ammo racing purple jacket with silver sword towards the inside forker timo getting across perfect play in yellow and black is very handy just about second followed by balance play in a pink cap with silver sword then fox journey on the inside the blue and white striped sleeves followed then by torito about midfield from sol Kao maso mara god of fire on the inside Seat door is further back from promoter, lose your wad, and Blue Universe is the back marker as they climb and climb a bit more. And it's for Katima by a length or so to perfect play second. Silver Sword third on the inside balance play is in fourth, followed by Fox Journey, decent position there in fifth place in the King Power Colours, followed by Torito to the outside of God of Fire, Sol Kao in a beige jacket, the Claret jacket on the inside, Masai Mara, a little bit worse than midfield from Promoter in green, lose your wad, Blue Universe still towards the back with the Philly seat door. On the tumble down now towards Tatnam Corner in the Betfred Leicester Piggott handicap, Forker Timau in the colours that's 
were carried into second place in the derby by King of Steel. What a run that was. For Katima, a half length to perfect play. Then on the inside, Silver Sword, under pressure, pushed along their balance play after a bit more. Then Fox Journey on the inside, further back to Torito, who's beginning to make ground. They're quite well strung out. For Katima is really pressing on the gas here. Leads to Silver Sword and perfect play. Then balance play. Fox Journey and Torito still making ground down the outside. White Jacket about to be produced by Benoit de la Sayette. Fulca team out from Silver Sword, but here comes Torito. Torito down the near side with a storming run as they race inside the final furlong back to balance play. Torito took it up from his second Silver Sword balance play and up towards the line. Torito is impressive, draws clear. Three or four to Silver Sword second balance play. Tight for fourth Masai Mara on the near side of Fox Journey. Torito 4 to 1, way too good. Benoit de la Sayette, Jonathan Thady Gost, and George Strawbridge, the winning owner. Silver Sword 14 to 1, finished in second. Balance Play 4 to 1 was third, but they were playing for places from a little way out. Fourth to Tomeo, who in the end finished seventh in the Ammo Racing Colours under Kevin Stott, led them along and at the top of the home straight began to quicken. The grey horse, though, Silver Sword, one of the grey horses, Silver Sword alert to it, has run a good race in second. And maybe his quirks at the start are past him. But Torito looks all class. A close relative of Journey, who just kept on progressing, was second to Artistic Star last time at Sandown, the horse who finished seventh in the derby. This fellow looks booked for a good race at Royal Ascot. The noble Leicester Pickett handicap has gone to Torito with John Gosden training him. Congratulations. Nice to win a, a, a race with this moniker, I would have thought. Yeah, with Leicester's name all over it. Yeah, it was, and he, he got the perfect Leicester Pickett ride, which is the way he liked to ride Epsom. Sitting fourth with one horse inside him, options to move when you want. And how, how highly do you rate Benoit de la Sayette? Oh, he's a very talented young man. He's uh, it's been a pleasure to work with. He overcame early adversity in his life and uh, a lot the stronger and wiser for it. And he, he rides extremely well. And I wanted to bring him here today. And he's not claiming any three pounds, yeah. five pounds allowance anymore. And, you know, he's shown himself well. He's, he's got a lot of talent and a lot of good, nice trainers give him backing. So it's very difficult with these apprentices. If you have an apprentice, suddenly you lose the allowance, you can fall off a cliff. And, uh, you know, he deserves a lot better than that. So are you, is your plan with Benoit to sort of um, steadily expose him to uh, sort of tougher assignments like riding here at the Derby Festival? Yeah, it's important for him to be here. He's got another ride coming up in the next. I I'm just very keen that he, he learns. He's still young and learning a lot, but uh, any, any opportunity you can give young riders is good. And uh, there are a lot of other love fine young riders around too. Absolutely. And we've had today uh, Frankie Dettori just over there kissing the grass and saying this is the last the time they will see him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he had a... He had a wonderful, wonderful brace of winners yesterday, nice winner today. And we knew walking the track together that the rest was not going to like the ground. And he, he had a leg in every county coming down the hill. But, you know, he might be back in the King Edward VII. And is Benoit one of the people who you're going to be turning to in, the, in 2024 and beyond? Frankie, he's always advised me on those matters. He's been very good at advising me, so I'll, uh, I'll listen to his opinion. After all, you want to get the opinion of the guys who are in the room, Absolutely. you know? And so, you know, Benoit's very much part of the future. There's Rab Havlin, who's been with me for many, many years. He's a huge part of the organization. And a lot of other young, good young riders around. I don't think we're short of good young riders. We're probably short of enough good horses for them. <laughs> and how about Torito, then? What's going to be the plan? Do you go to Royal Ascot well, with I'd him? I'd like to. I mean, you'll probably get bumped a few pounds, but that's a nice race in its own right. I think a mile and a his trip, whereas the other horse we ran needs a little further. So it's the, it's the handicap, the new, the, the new handicap, the relatively yeah, new handicap. Yeah, it's a, yeah, the Golden Gates, I yes, think it's called. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's the plan. okay, well, very best of luck. Thank best of luck for the rest of the day. Thank you. Following that race, we had the Rio Ferdinand Foundation Northern Dancer handicap, a mile and a half, for which the course specialist Keys Chorister was nine to four. Ready for the Rio Ferdinand Foundation Northern Dancer. And away they go. Sheer Rocks gave a little hop, leaving the starting stalls. Jungle Cove a bit slow into stride as they begin their long run uphill. And Keys Chorister goes on in the hands of Ryan Moore. Green team out wide. Max Mayhem handy in blue sleeves. Then Sheer Rocks on the inside, followed by Halifon. Scampi is wide, then followed by Jungle Cove towards the rear of the field. And Lucanda is just the early back marker. 
They'll cross from the outside running rail towards the inside now and it's uh, Keys Chorister, the two times course and distance winner, leading the way. Often a front runner. Sheer Rocks and Max Mayhem second and third. Sheer Rocks in the maroon sleeves, Max Mayhem blue sleeves. And they are followed by Green Teen and then uh, Halifon Jungle Cove on the inside of Scampy Black with white sleeves, Hayley Turner and Lucanda at the back of the field. Continuing uphill now and about to run past the mile marker. So still another furlong, furlong and a half of climbing and it's still Keys Chorister that leads the way to Max Mayhem, Sheer Rocks on the inside third. They're followed by Green Team in fourth place. They're uh, tracked then by Halifon, Scampy, Jungle Cove and Lucanda. About to, 10 lengths, nearly 10 lengths, first to last as they begin now this left-hand turn and about to run downhill. Keys Chorister by a length or so to Max Mayhem, the Kempton winner. Sheer Rocks on the inside, Green Team out wider, Halifon. Then the Scampi held up, bidding to follow up a York success from Jungle Cove and Lucanda. Running down towards Tattenham Corner now as they approach the final half mile or so of the contest and it's still Keys Chorister, Ryan Moore out to make all here on this uh, daughter of the Derby winner, Golden Horn. Keys Chorister turning in round Tattenham Corner from Max Mayhem on the outside of Sheer Rocks. Under a bit of pressure now is Halifon. Then Green Team Scampi, followed by Jungle Cove. Keys Chorister still goes well in front. Sheer Rocks, the only one within challenging range at the moment. Running on now Jungle Cove into third. From the back, Lucanda with a run down the outside, a rush down the outside, but it's Keys Chorister who's tackled by Sheer Rocks as they race inside the final two. Keys Chorister, Sheer Rocks now gets to the lead. It's Sheer Rocks that goes on under Harry Davis from Keys Chorister and Ryan Moore. Lucanda still making ground back in third. Might get second too soon, but uh, we'll have to fly to catch this leader. It's Sheer Rocks, a winner at Ascot last time, now at Epsom, and wins a little bit comfortably from Keys Chorister. And then in third, Lucanda, and they were well clear of Jungle Cove. Sheer Rocks has won and won again. 11 to 2 for Harry Davis and Eve Johnson Horton. Keys Chorister, 9 to 4 favourite, was second. Lucanda uh, just denied second, uh, finishing 20 to 1 and third best overall. And further back, Scampi, having been caught on heels, was a no real threat or no threat after uh, that good success last time. But Sheer Rocks is going the right way this year, that's for sure who's come back from gelding and uh, time off to win, winning at Ascot last time, going up two pounds and winning again. And in the end, brushing past the course regular and course specialist Keys Chorister, who'd set out the front under Ryan Moore, almost caught in the end for second by Lucanda. It's a Derby Festival double for Eve Johnson Horton, Bob Slay in the woodcut and now Sheer Rocks and that must have been so comfortable to watch, wasn't it? Well, it was, but I thought, oh, it's gone too soon. But actually, <laughs> and then I was watching it, well, there's nothing else coming, so I think we're all right. Yeah, it was great. Yes, unfortunately, I am someone who likes to shout them home. And uh, I had three runners yesterday that all had a bit of a shout. And, and uh, one today they had a right shout. So, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not great like that. It's, it's not unfortunate, though, is it? It means that things are going well. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's been a, a good 48 hours. Brilliant. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to hear it. I'm sorry it's happened. I thought it was a good wood winner in there. And, you know, some other horses that are very progressive in, in scamping. Uh, Andrew Baldwin's horse. Mm. It's nice to get there on the right one. And now you're talking about going to Royal Ascot, maybe 10 furlongs, maybe 12 furlongs. Do you still think there's plenty more improvement in him? I don't see why not. Um, I think the mile and a half is good for him. He he finds a lovely rhythm off a, off, a, off a stronger pace and he does everything the right way around, like I said. And he's one of them, you could ride him anyway. And as a jockey, it's, it feels you full of confidence. It's, it's nice. It's great to see you in the winners' enclosure after that. And that was the perfect trip. In contrast to what you suffered on Russet Gold in the three-year-old dash shortly after the start. From your perspective, can you talk me through what happened? Um, look, it's, it's the horse's first run of the year. And um, you know, Mr. Varian was, was very good after the race. Obviously, things didn't go to plan. Um, he, he just... A little bit of interference came for him early in the race. A little bit. I feel like yeah. you. I feel the way you said that. It's a bit of an understatement. Would that be fair? Yeah. It was. It, it, it took away his race. It took away his opportunity. Um, but you know, there's other there's other places for him. I wasn't too hard on him, and 
Um, he's a horse that Mr. Verum will, will prepare nicely for, for other nice races, and I'm sure he'll have his day. You know? okay. And thinking about your career, Andrew Balding has recently been talking about how he doesn't want to dash through your claim, that he's deliberately held you back in, in a way in order to conserve it so that you can actually get experience as you're moving along. What's that been like for you? Um, look, it's... Uh, it's, it's a big learning curve. Obviously, last year it all happened very quickly, and um, yeah, you know, as it goes, you, you don't. It happens so fast, you don't realise what's happening. And um, having the time off, he sent me to Bahrain. That was good. I, I had a, a lovely time out there with Alan Smith, and I was able to to, to learn a lot and really look back at what the racing was uh, was doing for me. And um, it, it's, it's, sometimes it's nice to, to take that little step back because obviously last year I was very overwhelmed with it all and um, I feel like I've, I've, I've learned a lot for, for slowing down and I'm ready for when it picks up again, you know. We've just started trying to take more rides and um, it's nice to get a, a winner on, on, on a day like today. Absolutely, on a, the Derby Festival on the Saturday, very much so. So, I mean, you were, talk, you were referring to the title race you had with Bernard de la Sea and the fact that you really were burst onto the scene quite early. So did you, I mean, looking back on it, did, did you actually find that quite challenging? Yeah, it was, it, of course. You know, I, I, um, I done a bit of pony racing, but it's, it's not quite the, the same amount of uh, pressure to, to on, on the big days. But, um, you know, I had a lot of support and I was very thankful for that and I wouldn't change it for the world um, but it was it was very overwhelming at times and uh, I'm glad it went the way it did I feel like I, I, I learned a lot and also being beaten probably helped me out a bit as well you know and who recognized this was it you was it your jockey coach was it Andrew and Annalisa how did how did you all come to the conclusion that actually this is how we should approach year two um, obviously I, I went through my claim extremely fast and um, Sometimes with that, you can still ride immature at times, yeah. and um, when you lose your claim, you can't really force uh, afford to do that. And yeah, I didn't I didn't want to lose my claim too fast, and then and then people would not have faith, you know. I think it's better to um, we we discussed that it would be better to half take a step back and really look at what we were doing, and I could I could learn for, uh, as it went along, you know, um, for when that claim goes, and just be more mature in the saddle. Okay. These are very, very wise words, Harry, and I'm sure that this sort of minor hiatus will really stand you in good stead. Many congratulations on this win. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Final race of the Derby meeting was the JRA Tokyo Trophy Handicap 6 furlongs, which probe was 3-1. to one. And uh, they're off for this JRA Tokyo Trophy over the six furlongs. Night on Earth predictably fast away. Count Otto, strike red. Mr. Wagyu last year's winner, blue with the orange cap, a little wide out from Apollo 1. Back on the inside to many a star in the light blue jacket from Defiant. And then uh, after these is Haymaker. Spring Bloom round the inside behind Probe as they run round the left-hander. Back in the field, Indian Creek, Baldomero, Venturous and Badry. Some way off the pace. The pace is a strong one. Night on Earth leading the way to strike red many a star on the inside mr wagyu right there the defiant is now being switched out wide from haymaker indian creek probe and then apollo one with a rush down the outside open looking race night on earth from strike red in behind the indian creek on the running rail in the black cap trying to get up that rail mr wagyu with every chance with the defiant haymaker battery now bursting down the outside inside the final furlong mr wagyu took it up but battery is finishing off well with apollo one and and it's Badri and Apollo 1 that go on together. Badri, Apollo 1. Badri near side. Badri. Badri wins from Apollo 1. In third, Mr. Wagyu. And they were away from the running on probe. Haymaker the Defiant and Strike Red. Badri 10 to 1 wins Holly Doyle and Ruth Carr. Apollo 1, 7 to 1 was second. Mr. Wagyu, 9 to 2. And third this year, having won it last year. Probe, the 3 to 1 favourite, was fifth. And a decent run. Haymaker in fourth. And no doubt, form to be going forward with. With a view as well to the Wokingham, given the fact that the second and third, in particular, Apollo 1, who was eighth last year in the Wokingham. And Mr. Wagyu, who's third today, was fourth last year in the Wokingham. And no doubt, with entries, they'll be going back there. But uh, Ruth Carr doing a super job with Badri over the last few months yet another win it'll be interesting to see exactly where they want to go and uh, take this horse next holly door timing it very well down the outside confirmation of your winners on derby day all the way back to the second race of the card august rodan winning 
the Blue Rim and itself, the 244th Betfred Derby. And a final Epsom mount, it would seem, for Frankie Dettori was Prosperous Voyage, Group 3 success, and the shortest priced horse to win on the day. And this is a confirmation of the times as well. And a couple of them dipping under standard. August Rodan, 1.32. Uh, quicker than the standard in the derby. Later on, Badri, a flying six furlong performance and decent performances on the clock uh, throughout. Suggestive of the conditions uh, that the runners were facing at Epsom on Saturday.